The sixth inning throwing a no-hitter, and yesterday had his best major league start. Had really a fantastic game yesterday. I was hoping that uh, getting his first start here at PNC Park would kickstart him a little bit. His other starts have been on the road. Three of them are really poor starts. Good numbers here at PNC Park. Great numbers at PNC Park. So I really think that you know pitching in front of the home crowd did something for him. He had his best fastball as a starter uh, that I have seen so far this year. He was at 94 consistently. Hopefully some of that rubs off on today's starter, Kevin Correa. The Pirate right-hander needs a good outing, and it's an important one for him probably. Well, we don't know exactly what's going to happen with the rotation. We uh, we heard before the game that there is going to be a change. The announcement's going to make uh, be made right after the game. But uh, Kevin needs a good start because he's going up against a real good pitcher, and we need this win. It would be great to have a sweep today. And uh, Kevin's got to go out there six, seven really solid innings to make that happen. Real good pitcher, Justin Verlander, last year's American League MVP and Cy Young winner. He took a no-hitter into the ninth with one out on the 18th of May. Josh Harrison was the guy to break it up. It really was an amazing game to watch. Uh, he is such a dominant pitcher. But, you know, that's history now. Uh, I don't want to see a replay today. I want to turn the page, and I want to beat this guy. He's got four losses this year. Let's give him five. Justin Verlander and Kevin Correa, the pitching matchup. Pirates looking to win their fourth in a row. A sweep would be nice. Kutch would certainly sign off on that. First pitch, Pirates and Tigers coming up on Root Sports. A capacity crowd is expected at PNC Park for the third straight day as the Pirates wrap up interleague play in 2012. Taking on the Detroit Tigers, Pirates start the day a season best six games over 500. Big reason for the 38 and 32 record, number 22, Andrew McCutcheon. He has been on fire here 
in the month of June. Big shot of PNC Park. A nice afternoon. Pirates looking for a three game sweep over the Tigers. Jim Leland sends his lineup out looking like this with Austin Jackson leading off. Quinton Berry and Miguel Cabrera. Career versus Kevin Correa. Pretty good numbers. Eight for 16. A couple of doubles and a home run. He hit a home run in yesterday's game to provide the Tigers with their only run. Justin Verlander 0 for 22 as a big leaguer at the plate. And Austin Jackson takes the first pitch of the ball game and hits it into left field for a base hit. That didn't take very long. No, that's not the way you want to get things going. Uh, your first pitch uh, get uh, hit hard for a base hit, but it uh, was cut off. Didn't get down in the corner, just a single. You can forget about it. Try and roll yourself a, a double play ball, although it's going to have to be firm right at somebody. Barry runs pretty well. well. A good thing for Kevin, lots of time to recover. Yeah. Clinton Barry, 305 hitter, the first four hitters in the Detroit lineup, all over 300. Kevin Correa won his last start against the Minnesota Twins Tuesday, and his three wins as a Pirate at PNC Park are all in interleague play against American League teams. In fact, he beat the Tigers here last year, opposing Max Scherzer, yesterday's pitcher for Detroit. Correa pretty quick with his delivery that time. Take a look at their uh, Western Pennsylvania Chevy dealers stats for Kevin Correa. His three wins uh, so far this year. Two of them have come in his last five games. So he has been pitching uh, much better for about a month now, bringing that ERA down. We're talking about you know rumors about what's going to happen with this rotation. Carson's not going to make another start uh, in rehab. He's going to be. Uh, Put in the rotation, and uh, what's going to happen? So, well, the uh, announcement was uh, kind of half made that uh, the, the rest of it, besides Carson, is going into the rotation. The rest of it, who's, who's going to come out? Or are they going to go with a six-man rotation? Quinton Berry crushes this one to right field. It's in the seats, and just like that, in the blink of an eye, Kevin Perez is down two nothing. Yeah, that's a uh, Something that didn't want to have happen. Obviously, uh, you, you don't want to fall behind early by even a run. Much less a crooked number, a two, or something else with Verlander going to take the mound for the other team. It's going to be one of those days where you would think runs will be tough to come by. And I was just about to say before he hit the home run, uh, we've been told an announcement about the rotation will be made after the game. This afternoon. And Cabrera to right field, and right after it is Garrett Jones for the out. One down. First major league home run for Quentin Berry. And with that one swing, the Tigers have scored as many runs as they did in the first two games of this series. Well, they have some uh, firepower, some star names in that lineup, star names on their pitching staff. Prince Fielder, certainly one of them. And they've underachieved a little bit when you look at uh, what their record is this year. But anytime you play the Tigers, you think, well, is this going to be where they explode and start to get on a roll? Because they, they have that kind of a roster. Two for eight in the series. Obviously, we know firsthand uh, what this guy can do, huh? We've seen him uh, probably <laughs> far too much he is, uh, in the past several years while well, he was a member of the Brewers. He gets a lot of booze when they announce his name here because of. How he has destroyed the Pirates over the years. So Leland, uh, perhaps in a better mood after this start, as compared to the last two starts. Kevin Correa now has given up 13 home runs on the season. And what makes it doubly difficult, Bob, is you get behind this early, and you've got a guy named Justin Verlander who's going to come out and pitch against you in the bottom of the first. He is very, very tough with the lead. Ball to Harrison, his shortstop playing the second base position. Two men out. Well, more news today to talk about. Just prior to the start of this game, the Pirates announced this roster move. Brian Morris has been recalled from AAA. 
one and two, 228 in 23 games this season. He's now with the Major League Club. Jordy Mercer has been sent back. Mercer appeared in only five games and did a lot of watching from the dugout, so he'll go back and get to play in Triple A. And also, the Pirates claimed infielder Drew Sutton off waivers from Tampa Bay. Remember, they acquired him, then sent him over there, and now he's back. And uh, you'd have to think at some point he'll be with this major league club. Charlie Morton was transferred to the 60 day disabled list and that opened up a spot on the 40 man roster for Drew Sutton. Sutton is a shortstop who, when he went to Tampa Bay started tearing it up offensively but Pirates ended up getting him back. Well, again if you, you know, we know part of the story that the Carson's is going to be back in the rotation what else is going to happen. Well. You're sending down an infielder calling up a pitcher you know for at least a while you're going to have an extra pitcher in that bullpen so there's a lot of little uh, things you can think about if you're trying to guess what's going to happen with this club. Roman Young grounds out tough start for Kevin Correa Justin Berlander coming out to pitch against the Pirates with a 2 nothing lead. Top of the first, and to the bottom of the first inning. Pirates getting set to face Justin Verlander. Clint Hurdle's lineup brought to you by Toyota. Presley Harrison at second base today. Neil Walker the day off. McCutcheon and then McGee in 16 interleague games. 321 is his batting average. Alvarez, Jones, Parmas, McHenry batting eighth, and Kevin Correa bats ninth against Justin Verlander. Verlander uh, to make a an argument the very best in all of baseball. Tremendous pitcher. You look at the strikeouts uh, 106 opponent batting average 204. Amazing numbers. Almost uh, almost as good as J Max. <laughs> well, two of his four losses have come when the Tigers have scored two runs. So half of his losses the team got him two and wasn't enough. It was on the 11th of April against Tampa Bay, and on the 2nd of May against Kansas City. They lost three to two. I think that's interesting, though. That Verlander so good, and his numbers are almost as good as J Max. I know it. <laughs> bunt attempts, and Presley is aboard with a bunt base hit. Beautifully done. Now that is Presley's job: set the table, get on base any way you can, and he has a great speed. It, you would think he could uh, perhaps get 10, 12 of these a year. And at the end of the season, you add 10 more hits on the what your stats. What does that have? What's that do to your batting average? And it'll it it it. from you know 280 to close to 300. Important part of the game that. Uh, Presley needs to really refine that bunting for a base hit. If nothing else, make that third baseman come play on the grass every time. Trying to bunt again, this time right into the glove. 
of Miguel Cabrera for the out. So the Pirates trying a small ball Verlander here early in the game. And the last two bunt attempts by Harrison have not been good. He followed up a squeeze play in last night's game. Made absolutely no con contact at all on the squeeze bunt attempt. Andrew McCutcheon, 345 the average, hit his 13th home run of the year yesterday. It was a three run shot. And provided the necessary margin. And a three run victory. Four to one in game two. Throw to first base. Very quick throw from Verlander. One thing we're going to keep track of today is Verlander's uh, velocity. One of the really odd things about his style of pitching is he starts off not throwing very hard and then it cranks it up as the game goes along. Timeout is called as Presley was not ready at first base. A near no hitter. Started the game out throwing a lot of 91, 92, and by the time he had 100 pitches, he was throwing 100. Swing and a miss. There it is, 91. Now let's watch. What it is. if he's around? I hope he's not. But let's say he is around in the seventh inning, eighth inning. We'll check out those fastball velocity numbers. See if they're not a lot higher than that. Vote for Kutch. Pirates.com. That should be in the All-Star game, but it'd be great to see him as a starter. And he needs your help. He will be there. That's that's etched in stone. A catch into right field and drifting back onto this Quentin Berry makes the catch in the corner and back to first base. Here's Alex Presley. Today's Rivers Casino tips to win. Oh, the theme is uh, cleanliness. Uh, start with a clean slate. Whatever Verlander did the last game against us, who cares? New day. Forget about that. Back him up while the ground balls on the infield. Uh, Correa's last start, he kept everything on the ground. Hadn't done that so far yet, but that's something we'll have to watch and uh, and also keep the plate clean because uh, Correa was uh, probably at his best control-wise in his last start, really hitting the corners. I want to make sure the umpire gets a good look at that. Casey McGee is two out of seven in his career against Verlander. One of those hits a home run. We keep everything nice and clean. Maybe we'll get the sweep. The cleanliness theme as the Pirates go for a series sweep. I haven't seen many brooms out yet, but I if, if we can uh, take a lead late, they'll start popping up. Speaking of pop ups, one to right field, Quentin Berry. They're there to play it. No runs to hit a man left. We're through one, two nothing, Tigers.
is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. By your Toyota dealer, where quality, dependability, and good MPG all come standard. Toyota, moving forward. And by Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. Let's go Bucks. Today, Kids Day Sunday, getting the braided necklaces. All kids 14 and under, now they can look like the pros. Those braided necklaces, got to have them. 2 nothing Tigers, leadoff single in the first pitch of the ball game by Austin Jackson, followed up by Quentin Berry's first major league home run. And the first pitch from Correa to Alex Avila is a strike. That was a control that I was talking about, that fastball that time right out on the corner. And that's how... You know, Correa needs to pitch. He's not a real overpowering guy. Has good stuff, but to stay out of the middle of the plate as much as possible. Throw the breaking balls. Uh, with lefty up there like that. Get it in on the hands a little bit. Keep him down. Back foot. See if you can get a swing and a miss. When you do throw the fastball, both sides of the plate. If you're even in the count, head the count. Make sure you just go for the edge. Avila is 0 for 6 in the series. But uh, when, when Correa has the control that he needs to pitch like that, he can be very, very good. We saw that uh, a ton of times last year. He made the All Star team. One, two. Oh, tapper to the left side, charging is Alvarez. We got it. One down. Take a look at our Barrel Automotive League leaders stats. We talk about the teams and series victories. And since the 25th of May, these teams have the most series wins. The Pirates, Angels, and Diamondbacks all tied for the best in Major League Baseball with seven series wins. Royals and Yankees next at six. Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. Pirates have won. Five straight series at home, eight of their last nine series overall, including this one. Johnny Peralta takes a curveball for a strike. Pittsburgh had won five straight series for the first time since the 1992 season before being swept in Baltimore on the last road trip. Some uh, roster maneuvering going on. Brian Morris called up from AAA. He is here. Jordy Mercer being sent back. Drew Sutton reacquired from Tampa Bay by the Pirates. The Pirates are going to play at least a, at least a few games with an overloaded bolt pin. Carstens will be inserted into the rotation sometime on the road trip, perhaps sooner than later. Well, if you want to speculate, just look at the the probables. Eric Bedard and Joe Blanton tomorrow. Bedard pro probably wouldn't mind an extra day's rest. He is a veteran guy, usually around 100 pitches or so. So you, you know what you're going to get with Eric, and an extra day's rest wouldn't hurt him. So when you say sooner than later, you could speculate maybe as soon as tomorrow in Philadelphia. But then you go to Thursday where Brad Lincoln's spot comes up. One is going to be out of play down the right field side. Well, all that will be answered uh, in a couple hours. But in between Bedard and Lincoln is McDonald and Burnett, and I don't suspect those guys are going to get moved. So, but Jeff Carstens was supposed to be in Indianapolis today. He's ready to go. Well, if and, they move uh, Bedard down, you got to move the other guys down. Well, that's yeah. yeah everybody gets an moves extra, back, extra, but everybody I mean, gets extra days rest. Well, the one-two. It's no foul. We know earlier this season, uh, isn't it AJ? Flip flop with somebody so he could stay on his regular day after a day off. So who knows? We'll, uh, we'll hear after the game. Uh, hopefully, uh, before we get done with the post game show. There's Eric Bedard talking to Walker. Uh, everything will be set for the uh, road trip. Speaking of days off, Neil Walker just for the day off today. He's been out there for a lot of games in a row. So Clint Hurdle just giving him a breather today. You know, one of the things that we do. Do know for sure. Even the good teams in baseball that win divisions. How many guys start for them and um, the starting pitchers they use during the course of a season? Some right. Nobody gets through with uh, with five or six guys. So 
See how it plays out during the year. Peralta pops it up to Jones. Two out. Well, the other thing that we haven't talked about much is the fact that this is a very long stretch of games. 20 games in 20 days. And there was some talk last year at some point that they would go to a six man rotation. Maybe that conversation gets re energized here with these long stretch of games. This long stretch of games. And there's another long stretch in August. It's even longer than this one. As yes, Dan Saver and I had a discussion about that about a month ago. Uh, would that ever happen? And you know, it wouldn't surprise me 10, 12 years from now, everybody's got a six man rotation because that's kind of the way baseball is going and really trying to protect the starting pitchers. And uh, it used to be a four man rotation, got moved to a five, maybe a, maybe a six uh, for everybody who's down the road. Except if you're the Colorado Rockies now, Jim Tracy has gone to a four man rotation with a twist. Yeah, he's holding everyone to 75 pitches. Yeah, so 75 pitch count. So he's kind of like a starter by committee because yeah, it. The bullpen has to pick up at least four innings every night if you're going to do that. Six occasionally, or excuse me, three innings occasionally, but 75 pitches, if you're really going to stick to that, you're talking five, six innings at most. One, two delivery to Rayburn. Got him on the outside corner. Good comeback inning. For Kevin Correa as he gets the Tigers in order and punches out the number eight hitter. Two nothing Tigers after an inning and a half. San Francisco Giants Friday July 6th it's a free shirt Friday all fans get a Pirates t-shirt thanks to Trib Total Media come early for a block party on Federal Street before the game and enjoy live local music and food plus you can have your free t-shirt for tickets or to see all the free shirt Friday designs go to pirates.com slash free shirt Friday silhouette of Andrew McCutcheon on that t-shirt a little bit warm but Overcast skies trying to keep things relatively cool. Lots of boat traffic on the Allegheny River today. Just a great Sunday afternoon in Pittsburgh. Yeah, it is a, a beautiful afternoon. It seems like uh, it's not very humid out today. Very comfortable. Looks like another sellout, perhaps. Three straight. Well over 30,000 in here. I think it's going to be a. a Summer of sellouts. The river looks sold out today too. Yeah. Majestic thing. having to pick its way through the boats. Good thing they left a lane. Yeah. Verlander pitching to Pedro Alvarez, pitch outside for ball one. Pedro 222. Hopefully climbing. 13 homers, 35 runs batted in. Pedro moving up a spot in the order. 
Flip flopping with Garrett Jones from the sixth spot to the fifth spot. And Clint Hurdle saying that Jones would offer some protection for Pedro in this lineup today, but mostly because Walker is out, and Walker would hit fifth. Wanted Pedro to hit there and Jones to hit behind him. Well, I think when uh, when Pedro is locked in and hitting like he uh, has been over about the last week or so, it doesn't matter where he's hitting in that lineup. One ball, two strikes. I think that's probably true with uh, most hitters. When they're hot, swinging the bat good, seeing the baseball great, doesn't matter who's hitting in front of them or who's hitting behind them. The only thing that might have an effect on that is uh, teams might choose not to pitch to him and uh, throw four wide ones and put him on base. Right by Pedro at 94. Lander picked it up three mile an hour on what he was throwing in the first. Take a look at our AGH cam coming to you from center field today. The four seam fastball. You can see exactly why they call it that. Those uh, seams. There's four of them around the ball that bite into that win with every revolution of the baseball. And when you have a perfect backspin on a four seamer, the ball really fights gravity and will stay up and stay straight. And you can throw that fastball by guys when it's up high at the letters. The two seamer. That's the one that has a little sink on it. It allows uh, has it to spin. Usually he's a little off to the side. Guys will kind of flop their wrist out a little bit on two seamer. Gravity will take effect and pull that ball down to the ground. Jones pops it up, shallow right. Quinton Berry under it. Two down. But the way that baseball is put together with the seams it creates all kinds of, of different aerodynamic type forces on the ball, depending on how the seams are spinning as they're going through the air. That's how you get your movement. That's a great hat. Matches the free shirt Friday t shirt. And a rope. With the necklace, the whole collection. Yeah. The weekend wardrobe. Two out, space is empty for Barmas. That takes strike one. Barmas hitting 202. And one plate appearance in yesterday's game. Got himself a base hit in the eighth inning. Ball in one strike. Justin Verlander, five times he's been the opening day starter for the Tigers. He's got a way to go, though, to catch Jack Morris's franchise record of 11 straight opening days. Certainly nobody will discount his efforts. Let's take a look at the AGA. See how the, the fingers are coming over the top of the baseball at release. And now there's actually a a top spin. It's a spinning a little bit sideways, not a real good top spin. Uh, but that top spin totally changes the way the ball is going to react because of the, uh, you know, now you have a little bit of a low pressure zone on the bottom of the ball instead of on the top of the ball. And so it's not going to be fighting gravity as much, and the curveball is going to go in and look like it falls off the kitchen table. 2 2 line shot right at Peralta. And Justin Verlander gets the Pirates in order in the second inning.
started the Pitch for Hope Clinic last year, and guess what? Those ladies were back again early this morning here at PNC Park. Clint Hurdle, some of those coaches, and a few select players actually got a chance to work a two-hour clinic helping these ladies with the fundamentals of the game. I know it's not the same as fantasy camp down in spring training, but hey, to get two hours of instruction from these guys is still pretty good. The Glimmer of Hope Foundation and Pirates Charities will donate proceeds from this event to the Allegheny or, or to Allegheny General Hospital to help provide testing and screening for breast cancer. And actually, guys, they provided a check before the game. It was just over twenty thousand dollars. So obviously, great to see the ladies out playing, but obviously for a good cause as well. Twenty-three thousand two hundred eighty-five. A great donation, and certainly it's a cause near and dear to Clint Hurdle's heart. His mom, Louise, a breast cancer survivor for twenty years now. So. He has no problems at all volunteering for that and sharing his time in an effort to raise money. Justin Verlander, 0 and 2. And uh, he strikes out. 0 and 3. I like that count. 0 and 3. 0 and 3 is a good count. How about this one? 0 for 23 as a major league hitter. Now, he's still pretty valuable to have on your team. Yeah, he's not paid to hit. <laughs> Even if he was a National League pitcher, who would care? I don't think he's that concerned, judging from the expression. I think he's uh, hearing it from the crew, though. They're probably saying, hey, weren't you the MVP? You can't hit. <laughs> and he's not even in the perfect club. I'm wondering uh, if who's giving it to him the best. I would think that Fielder would be a guy that would. Get on him a little. Short hop. Barnes will lose the handle on the ball. And Austin Jackson safe. Play didn't start very well. Short hop came out of the glove and this looked like a grip problem. A grip problem twice. Once there and once there. The second time I, he changed his mind and decided to. To not throw the ball, he probably didn't have a, a real good handle on it, and uh, he tried to stop. But the ball came out anyway. It's a, you'll, you'll see somebody throw a ball straight down into the ground. It's because just as they're about ready to, to make the throw, they change their mind, and then they, they want to try and hold on to it. But the ball has already made its decision. It's coming out, and it almost hits you in the foot. Base hit for Austin Jackson. That's how it scored. Now sometimes when you're in really a big hurry, you get like maybe one finger behind the baseball, and you want to try and throw the ball across the diamond like that. You're taking a big chance. Correa did what he wanted to do, and that was get the ground ball to short. In his last outing, he had 12 ground ball outs. That was a big key for him, keeping the ball down. He didn't keep it down against Barry the last time, and Barry hit his first major league home run. Snap throw back to first. He putting a tag on Jackson, but Jackson back safely. Yeah, watch how quick this tag is. This is a Nice snap tag right to the ankle. One of the uh, few advantages of being a right handed first baseman when that throws coming from the catcher. If you catch it right on the foul line like McGee did really easy to get a quick tag down. Nothing on with the pitch out. The Pirates have had so much trouble this year of stopping runners from getting the second base. Trying to put a little extra work on it here with Jackson on. Correa is one of the, the better guys, though, at getting the ball home uh, quickly. There goes the runner, Jackson. Throw down by McKinley. Hey, caught him. Nice throw by McKinley, and a good job by Correa. Not much of a leg kick. Got the ball to McKinley very quickly. Well, that ends a streak of 30 straight base stealers against the Pirates. McHenry threw out Danny Espinosa against the Nationals in mid-May, then thrown a base runner out. 
until right now. Yeah, that's just the fifth batter, a fifth runner that's been caught this year trying to steal. And Barry now will walk down to first base. The last major league team to allow 31 straight stolen bases was the 2010 Red Sox. And the previous record for the Pirates of consecutive base stealers allowed 20 from May 24th to the 3rd of June 1970. But the new record 30 straight and that ended right there as the fort guns down Austin Jackson. Two outs and a man aboard for Miguel Cabrera who lined out to right. They always want to set a record but they don't want to forget about that one. Yeah, that's not the record you want. No. But fortunately, you know, you look at the guys that have scored in that, that string of 30 straight guys, and it's been very, very few because the Pirates pitching has been able to strand a number of runners. The ERA has uh, remained low no matter what they're doing out on the bases. It's job one is always the hitter. And the Pirate pitching staff ranks first in the major leagues with a home ERA of 226. Held the opposition to two earned runs or less 24 times in the first 35 games at this ballpark. Best in the big league. 1 0, and that's down for a ball. 2 0. Yeah, the, the tough part sometimes uh, when you're thinking about the, the base dealers is you want to be quick home, but you don't want to take anything from your pitches. And uh, you know, maybe Correa was being real quick with Jackson and it took something for from his pitches and that's why he walked Barry. He's trying to do the same thing with Cabrera and he's falling behind 2 and 0. Oh. Now 2 and 1. You know, there's a, a compromise that you have to find and a lot of times with pitchers it's a little bit of experiment. Some guys are, they can do it very easily. They're very good at it. It doesn't take away anything from their pitches to be quick home. Other pitchers like uh, A.J. Burnett to, as an example. I mean he is not quick. And he's not going to change but if he did try and they probably his experiment with it in the past he didn't like it. To the right side Harrison not going to get it. Barry will hold at second base and a base hit for Miguel Cabrera. If you feel that being quick to the plate is going to make you a sitting duck as far as your pitches take away from your control whatever. Then it's not worth doing. I, uh, that fastball right over the outside half, and uh, Cabrera is not the usual power hitter. He will use all fields. He doesn't care. He's just a good hitter with exceptional power. He is aboard. Two men on for Prince Fielder. First That's time in the series, he's been at the plate with more than. A man on some uh, you know, power hitters are just pure sluggers. They're going up there and they're they're trying to pull the ball and hit it nine miles with every every swing. But that's not all of them. Even Fielder, I think, is evolving a little bit as a hitter. You know, a few years ago, you would never see him hit balls to left field. Uh, this year, in the Tiger uniform, especially, we've seen him go to, to left and left center quite a bit. Twenty-five of them to the left side. Pirates would consider him a pure pull hitter. Time is called. On the infield, I'll bet you that their their spray chart doesn't show that on balls in the air. Though. In, in the infield, yes, he's a pull. He's not going to hit a whole lot of ground balls uh, through the shortstop side. That that's going to be a, a rarity. Oh, oh. he tackles it. Toss to Correa. Hey, got him. Oh, what a play. Glove save and a beauty by Casey McGee. Nice job by uh, Correa. He was there for him and made a tough little stretch and kept his foot on the back. Saved himself a run. Wow. Not your average defensive play right here on a rocket. Hit to Casey McGee. Kept it in front. Turned it into an out. And the Tigers strand too.
Heading to the bottom of the third inning here at PNC Park with Dan Potash and Bob Walker and Tim Never. Glad you're watching Bucks baseball with us on a kids' day Sunday afternoon. Yeah, I, I agree. Bucks need to find a way to break through against Justin Verlander, who was spotted to a two-nothing lead in the top of the first. Benton Barry's two-run home run. And McHenry will take a strike. One sixty-seven. For McHenry, the backup catcher, has a limited number of at-bats due to the fact he plays a couple days a week. It's the second uh, shot at Verlander. He's uh, behind the plate. I think when Verlander pitched against us in Detroit, right? He. Uh, you know, that's another thing with the, the backup catchers. Sometimes they get some tough ex assignments. Yeah, he went over three that night, grounded out twice to short, struck out. I remember uh, some guys uh, back when Tony Pena was uh, the everyday catcher and Junior Ortiz was his backup. Some guys getting on Junior about his batting average, it was like 180 or something like that. And so then Junior goes, Look at the guys that I've played against. You know, he's like, Don Sutton, Nolan Ryan. I mean, went down this long list of like the All Stars. Chopper to third, and McHenry safe an infield single. The fourth, scurrying down the line. Second hit off of Verlander this afternoon. I think it's safe to say that uh, McHenry runs better than most catchers. Cabrera pointing very deep. He took a couple extra steps with that ball also. Underestimating how oh, fast Michael could get down the line. The fort get out of the box like he was shot out of a cannon. So now the Pirates will try to get him into scoring position. Kevin Correa will be asked to sacrifice. Cabrera in on the grass at third base. Fielder playing close to the bag at first. Now he'll come to field it. A nice butt by Correa. Gets the job done. Three four in the putout. And McHenry over to second base, and the Pirates in scoring position. Alex Presley will have a shot now. Cutting this lead in half for that great bunt by Correa. I put it down perfectly, first base side. With fielder having to hold on the runner. Fielder, a conservative right there with the lead. He just made sure he got one out, didn't take a chance as he was fielding that ball. Took a look at second. He might have had a shot at it, but if you look at game one of this series, a sacrifice bunt where the Tigers tried to get the lead runner turned into a disaster for him. And it was a huge turning point in the game. Fisher tried to make a throw to third base and ended up putting it uh, down past the rain tarp. And resulted in a second run when the left fielder Delman Young misplayed it against the railing and Rod Barajas was able to rumble home to the plate. Very seldom is it a bad move just to get an out. You know, take the take the sure out at first base. And now there's an open base. Uh, Wherever the manager might be, can decide to pitch around somebody. There's a, some options left, but you try to take a gamble, and if you don't, if you don't do it right, the best case scenario is everybody's safe. Worst case scenario is you throw it in the outfield or down a foul line and a couple of runs score. Presley came into the game at a 234. He's up down a little bit to 238. Nine out of 24 in his last seven home games. John Whalen looking on, trying to find a way to salvage a game out of the series. The Tigers considered underachievers in the American League. 34 and 37, three and a half in back. In the American League Central, so they trail Cleveland by three and a half, and with the players, Chicago by three. The players they have on this roster, though, they, you, you would just think that it's a matter of time where they get on some kind of a run where they'll 
win seven or eight games in a row and everything will be fixed. Freshly popped up left side Cabrera calling for it looking up into the sky makes the catch. Well, you talk about some of the guys underachieving perhaps and maybe the guy at first base it's been a King's ransom to get him. And he's got about half as many home runs right now as he did this time last year. Last year he had 20 home runs at this time. Yeah, he's having a solid year. When you look at his stats, you can't say anything bad about it. But yeah, he did. Uh, he set the bar rather high last season. 63 RBIs to 45 this year. Average right around the same. Two men out. Josh Harrison, who bunted the ball last time up, bunted a line drive to third. Harrison was the guy who broke up Verlander's no hitter in the ninth inning back on the 18th of May. Reached for a ball and poked it up the middle for a base hit. Twenty nine year old Justin Verlander, the second overall pick in the 2004 draft. Tim Tim says that he did not go, so it's a one ball, one strike count to Harrison. Verlander has been around for a while, seven years now with the Tigers. This is his first ever start here at PNC Park. One-one pitch. And Harrison pops it up. Foul ground. Prince Fielder. Good play right next to the 45-foot line. And the Pirates are done in the third. No runs to hit a man left through three. Two nothing Detroit. Driven series. The new episode features a rare look at second baseman Neil Walker, whose upbringing and family drives him to take a positive approach to baseball and life. Driven tomorrow at six on Root Sports. Right there, that is Neil's nephew Ryan. He's already got a baseball. Of course, he's got the uh, the black and gold necklace, which clashes desperately with the. Uh, the, uh, the Tiger Colors. <laughs> yeah. And Kelly. There's Donnie. Dad Donnie and the other dugout. Donnie hasn't played this series. He's had a banged up knee. So he's okay though. He's out uh, early though for the uh, pregame ceremony. Point Park College baseball team. Bouncer to short. Barmas there. And Delman Young is out. Kelly, graduate alum of Point Park, standing next to him, waving his hand. Lauren Torres, the head coach, as they went to the NAIA World Series. He was a proud alum, posing with 
the Point Park team that was tremendous this year. Thank you. As Coach Torres gets congratula congratulations from the fair, they had 53 wins this year in college baseball. That's a ton. They finished 53 and 11. Avila slowly rolls it to Harrison. Two gone. The 11th appearance in the NAIA World Series. They had the number seven seed. They finished fifth. That's back in 79 and 86, they finished third. 12 and 22 all time in the World Series. How about the uh, notable alumnus? Yes. You know that first guy? No. Greg Brown, you ever heard of him? Dan Hart. Dangerous Dan. Dangerous Dan. He works in the media relations areas, Point Park. Proud alum right there. He says, let me get back to work. <laughs> Stop looking at me. I'm sure Steve is uh, having some choice comments. Steve's probably just happy the camera's not on him for a change. Johnny Peralta with two outs, the one open. That is low. Well, Steve was, uh, I think, wanted to be on the camera. He's very proud of his attire today. He was looking sharp. Came in on a Sunday, with a nice long sleeve. Rush shirt with an interesting pattern. There he is right there. It's like the uh, tablecloth at his picnic table. <laughs> to center field, Peralta hits it deep. Back to the wall, McCutcheon, and McCutcheon makes the catch. Dropped it on the exchange, and that is out number three as Correa gets the Tigers in order for the second time this afternoon. Andrew McCutcheon. Leaping right in front of the wall to end the inning. Of the fourth inning. Justin Verlander on the hill for the Tigers today. He's a tough guy and put uh, good success behind him. Our AT&T Mobility trivia question. Verlander has gone 57 straight starts with at least six innings pitched. Can you name the three pitchers with the top three active streaks? Andrew McCutcheon takes ball one outside. Well, uh, Verlander would be a good guess. <laughs> Let's start there. How about we yeah. start there? Verlander and the uh, I mean, you could think of a handful of guys at least. CC Sabathia probably. Sabathia always goes deep into games. Two balls in, no strikes to catch. But if if you really want to think about it a little bit, it, it, you'd almost have to stay. In the American League. 
because it's much easier to go six innings in the American League than it is a National League. Yeah, you don't have to worry about your spot coming up in the order. Exactly. If you fall behind early on, as long as you gather your forces and are able to to keep things together and put up zeros after that, like a bad first inning in the in the American League is not going to get you out of the game early. A bad first inning in the National League might. You know, you give up four runs early, and now your spot comes up uh, in the fifth, and there's you know, you're down by three, and there's a couple of guys on base. Second and third, they're going to pinch hit for you. American League, that's not going to happen. So it's, if you guess American League guys, the chances of being correct, I think, in this question, are going to be better. 3 2 pitch. In the air to right. Clinton Berry under it. And Kutch is 0 for 2. A couple of flyouts to right field. If it's a National League guy, it's going to have to be a, a very much an elite pitcher. Roy Halliday. Well, it's got to be a guy like that. But now I think that Halliday, he, he left the game early the other day, didn't he, for health reasons? Well, he's on the, yeah, he's hurt. I think he didn't he come out of the ball game like in the second inning or something his last start well, might have ended his streak it could have I but he would be a now that's the kind of pitcher and he did do a lot of pitching in American League too but that's the kind of pitcher you're looking for if it's not it's a National League guy it's got to be a, a stallion well, we'll find out the answer shortly one ball and no strikes to Casey McGee Verlander deals and that's a strike on oh. one our AGH injury update as we look ahead of the Phillies series. Chase Utley still on the 15 day DL, although he could return midweek. Ryan Howard is out, but the Achilles and Roy Howard out of the DL. Strained lap. Just talking about him, won't we? Isn't that amazing how that works? Oh, just catching the inside corner, fooling McGee. And a 1 2 count now to the Pirate first baseman. I take a look at the strike zone grid down on the right side. Where did that ball come in? A little inside. Herlander got the benefit of the doubt. Tried to go outside that, that time. Did and get the benefit of the doubt on that one. <laughs> See the luck. Maybe he walked on his call. face. You can't have them both, can you? He got one. He wasn't going to get. Yeah, if you get one of those, I don't know if you can uh, complain too much. And McGee went around. And he is arguing right now with Marty Foster, home plate umpire, saying he didn't. And McGee asking for the appeal, but well, he's—you he's, he, he can't get an appeal. Can't do that. He, he is what he's doing is he's saying you can't make that call on your own. You have to ask. Now Clint Hurdle comes to get McGee, make sure he stays in the game. Yeah, the hitter can't ask for the base umpire to overturn the call. Once it's called a swing by the home plate umpire, it's a done deal. And now Clint Hurdle has been thrown out of the ball game. That's a pretty quick hook by Marty Foster. A very short leash given to the Bucko skipper this afternoon. And now he is going to let Foster hear about it. And that didn't take long. I'd be very interested to see what was said. I mean, it, it, there wasn't a lot of jawing. It wasn't a, an animated conversation. But uh, something uh, Foster didn't want to hear. He threw him out real quick. Second time Clint's been run from a game this year. And he's not done. Now he's dialing long distance. I will have to hand over the uh, lineup card. Here's what the argument was about. Foster saying the head of the bat was. Out in front of home plate. You don't see too many happen like that, do you, Tim? No, you don't. It's just it, it, like uh, they were having like a little casual conversation. Yeah, it, and even throwing him out was strange, casual. Strange. And the, it, it, I think what Clint said there after he was run, he said, that's unbelievable. And you know we'll hear I'm sure about it after the game and we'll talk to him tomorrow in Philadelphia about that too. I'm sure he'll be scratching his head. But that was a very very quick trigger by Marty Foster. 
So Jeff Bannister, the bench coach, will take over even as the manager. Way, even the way Foster did it, it was real nonchalant. Pedro pops it up to left field. Delman Young makes the catch. Pirates done one, two, three in the fourth. We're on to the fifth inning at PNC Park. Tigers leading it two to nothing. Pirates Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. By PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. And by Chevy Cruze, which offers EPA estimated 42 MPG highway. Let's go Bucks! Summer Sunday afternoon at PNC Park. Pirates trying to get back in this one. And Kevin Correa trying to hold down the Tigers. Ryan Rayburn, the number eight hitter, leading off, and Jeff Bannister takes over as the manager now. Since Clint Hurdle was ejected in the bottom of the fourth, He's been reached for and tapped to center field, a base hit. One for two now for Rayburn, a leadoff single. The good look at that uh, the overspin that you try to put on the ball and when you throw the curve ball and you can see playing his day why that ball wants to go down as it gets up toward the plate. Justin Verlander will try to sacrifice a man over. He's done that successfully eight times over the course of his career, three times this year. Struck out swinging in the third inning, 0 for 1. The two runs for Detroit came in the top of the first inning. Jackson a single, and Barry his first major league home run, first two hitters of the ball game. And since then, Kevin Correa has done a pretty good job shutting things down. But to give Verlander a two run lead, you got to ambush him at some point if you're going to beat him. Yeah, we talked about that in the very first inning. That, you know, the, the bad part about the two runs is normally it's not much of a disaster, but against Verlander, might not be a disaster, but it's not good news. There's a strike. If you're a pitcher at the plate, you don't want to waste your questions with the home plate umpire when you're at the when you're hitting, do you? Yeah. <laughs> you want it to be on your side when you're on the hill. Well, you can ask him some questions, but you, you definitely don't want to do it in a way where you're complaining about anything. Verlander bunts it out in front. Alvarez right there throws him out. Nobody covering third, but McHenry alertly got down there. One out now. Sacrifice successful. 
You can enter to win a VIP experience at PNC Park during our All-Star Fan Appreciation. Each day next week, look for your chance to win an exclusive day at the ballpark. Tuesday, July 10th, during the All-Star break. Take batting practice, run the bases, enjoy lunch in the clubhouse, and a whole lot more. It's a great, great experience. And for additional details and uh, how to enter, visit our website at rootsports.com. While you're there, check out our Game Connect feature. Austin Jackson on the right field line. This ball slicing and uh, play. Yeah, that'd be a neat thing to do. Of course, during the All-Star break, no baseball, but it, you can have your own game right here at a Major League Park. Lincoln hats are back. Mr. Lincoln's hats. They were all over the place last. I keep saying last night, yesterday. Well, that's the problem with the four o'clock. Yeah, the yeah, four o'clock game. It's not really yesterday, and it's, when it finishes, it's, it's not, not today. A game, it's a night game. Yeah, a twilight single game. <laughs> yeah, no hat today. They're yeah, not going to be able to fool him with a cap on his skull. Yeah, he would be able to feel that. You would think. That was funny. That made the national highlights. Lincoln's got to be a little curious about what kind of announcement will be made uh, after the game. Of course, you know, and I, I mentioned this uh, with Rob in the pregame show. What the pitchers know and what the media know, not necessarily the same thing. You know, Lincoln, he may have already been told what his role is going to be on this team for the next two weeks. We, we don't know that. Same thing for, with, you know, we're speculating on is this an important outing for Correa because. Parsons is coming back and they're waiting till after his start to make an announcement. You know, it's all kinds of speculation going on. You just don't know what the players have already been told. And, or should we? Uh, that's why the clubhouse has doors on it at times. That's why it's open and closed. Yeah. yeah there, there are things that are in house that the manager and the players keep between themselves. One, two pin. Outside, it's good access. It's great access to the players, coaches, and manager. And manager does a very good job of trying to help everybody out in the media every single day. But the other thing too, you know, Brian Morris being called up today. Jordy Mercer being sent back to Indy, so an extra pitcher. And you got to wonder if that's because maybe they figure one of the relievers may not be available for a day or two. And with Drew Sutton being reacquired, an infielder, maybe when the bullpen gets right again, then Drew Sutton comes here. Who knows? I mean, these are just all things we're thinking about. And he was waived by Tampa Bay. Now with the Reds, the Indians, the Red Sox, and the Rays. Originally drafted by the Astros in 2004. And a miss, and there goes Jackson down on strikes. Two men out. Man picking up his uh, third strikeout. Kevin, usually not a big strikeout guy, but that was an important one to get runner in scoring position. There's the cut fastball. See how this right at release, you saw the fingers come off the side of the ball a little bit. That puts a, just a, a, a touch of sideways spin on it. So the ball won't tail back toward the hitter. If anything, it's going to move away from the hitter. Watch the fingers come off the side of the ball. See that? Got a kind of a two seam grip right at release, and it puts a little bit of a side spin on the ball, almost like a like a football. How you'd release that football and have it spin as it's going in. And that makes that slider or cutter, whatever you want to call it, will actually move away from the right hand hitter just a little bit. And Keep it for sure from tailing back in, which you definitely don't want to happen in that uh, situation where you're trying to keep the ball away from the guy. I like these uh, the AGH looks today. We're getting a nice bright sun. Really slow it down. This is great. Love the AGH pants. <laughs> Couldn't tell. <laughs> oh, it's just it, it. It it gives you a look at at things that there's just no other way to to see. And, and sometimes it's hard to explain. And you know, the only way to explain it is you have to be able to 
to see it for yourself. AGH cam normally we have it a little closer to home plate. It's out in center today. One ball and one strike to Quentin Berry. Two men out and in scoring position. Berry follows this one back off of McHenry. We have the uh, bright sun day games like this. They can uh, slow it down to 900 frames per second. As opposed to 30 for the regular cameras. When the lighting is not so good, uh, sometimes you can only slow it down to th around 300 frames. So the AGH cam really comes into its own on a nice, bright, sunny day. Correa's 1 2. Count even two balls, two strikes. It's early 24th of June Pirates 38 and 32 but just for fun you look at the wild card standings and they're tied with the Mets a game back of San Francisco remember there are two wild cards this year so you and I were speculating earlier said if the season ended today there there'd be a play in game for the one game wild card <laughs> that'd be a playoff for the playoff nothing wrong with that That's Exciting stuff here. Basically, you're creating game sevens. Three two pitch, two down. This one pulled foul out of plate on the right field side. It'll be interesting, really, to see how this thing you know plays out. What happens if? I'm sure Major League Baseball has played in all the scenarios, but what happens if there was a tie for that second wild card spot? The schedule being as tight as it is at the end of the season. And the way I heard they're going to decide it is you get the two managers and they throw a baseball bat up between them, you know, and you keep putting your hand on top. And yeah. High touch stuff. Yeah. Strike three call. Correa gets him. Strikeout number four, two in the inning. Excellent control. Four and a half. It's two nothing Detroit. Inning 2 nothing. Detroit with the lead. Our AT&T Mobility trivia question has to do with Justin Verlander. He's gone 57 straight starts with at least six innings pitched. Can you name the pitchers with the top three active streaks? Well, we had uh, CC Sabathia in there. Cliff Lee. And of course Verlander. Sabathia with 15. 
Lee with 22 although Cliff Lee has not had the success this year in terms of wins and losses that he would expect and normally is accustomed to he's only three. Garrett Jones a one ball no strike pitch coming from Verlander. Broke his bat. And waiting for it Peralta. That one didn't sound right. It sounded like he was using a hollow tube to hit with. <laughs> Not the classic uh, crack of the bat. Four seam fastball right almost on the uh, the middle part of the bat where the, the dark paint and the natural wood come together. Tell me that didn't sound hollow. <laughs> Did not sound good. Garrett might get ripped about that one a little bit in the dugout. It's getting sawed off. And Barmas is 0 for 1. He was somewhat jammed. Got it right under the label and snapped on the thin part of the handle. One ball and one strike to Barmas. Two oh one on the year for him. Pirates have one of the two best records in the National League in interleague play. Ten and seven. Washington Nationals tied with them, also ten and seven. That was a thing that Clint Hurdle had said earlier today that was uh, a check mark on the to do list. Do better in interleague play than a year ago, which they've done. One ball, two strikes now to Barnes. Clint's going to have to watch the rest of this game in the clubhouse. Ejected in the bottom of the fourth inning, coming out after Casey McGee was. Having a word or two with Marty Foster after a check swing was called a strike. And a very, very quick hook by Marty Foster. A casually quick hook. Yeah, both the. You know, I, I didn't see. You know anything that would like be showing up the umpire. Or, but. Uh, Marty Foster. Decided that whatever was being said he didn't like and. You know, he didn't give the the uh, the crow hop in the throw that you see a lot of times from umpires. Just kind of moved his arm. It's and you're uh, you're gone. So that's usually an umpire's big moment is when he gets to toss somebody. But here he just says, "Oh, oh by the way, you're out." Uh, right here. Oh, by the way, uh, you know, it looks like they're just having a little conversation. And nothing. Yeah, a little nod of the yes. Yeah, yeah. So his hip. Yeah, yeah. Take uh, the rest uh, of the yeah. afternoon off. Yeah, go ahead. But it, it was really so non-confrontational looking. It didn't happen very often. The umpire's name is written in at the top of the lineup card. Second time Clint has been run this year. Full count to Clint Barmas. One out, base is empty. Verlander's pitch. Roll to the left side. Peralta handles it. Throws out Barmas. Two gone for the Pirates in the fifth inning. Justin Verlander makes his home in Lakeland, Florida. That's the spring training home of the Tigers. Originally born in Virginia. Pitched collegiately at Old Dominion. And set a record while pitching in college in the Colonial Athletic Association. 427 strikeouts before he was done and then was drafted second overall in 2004. Homegrown Tiger product. Michael McHenry takes strike one. Oh, fastball only 90 mile an hour. It really hasn't kicked the velocity up like I thought he would. At this point of the game. Well you started to see it early where in the second and third innings his velocity was higher than it was in the first his average velocity on the fastball. Down a little bit in the fourth. But he is known to ratchet it up as the game goes along. Right two. One and two to the fourth. 
Seems like uh, quite a few breaking balls this game. It'll be interesting later on. I think we're going to look at his uh, his percentages and kind of compare them to what he normally does. Another curveball. Second straight inning, the Pirates have gone down in order. We'll head to the sixth inning on a Sunday afternoon at PNC Park. Getting a grip with Justin Verlander. Yeah, this is some great shots here. So there you see the four seam fastball right at release. He's pulling down across the, the four wide seams. Here's the two seamer. Same uh, same release point and everything. He's just holding it with the seams. He'll get a little more movement that way. Curveball. He's trying to come around and over the top of the ball at release. And finally, there's the change up. He's got the circle change. He's making the OK sign with his thumb and his. Uh, Four finger. Four finger, pointer finger. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the uh, the change up. Four great shots from uh, what could be the absolute best pitcher in the game. Why do we call it a four finger when it's just one finger? Uh, I, I don't know. That's a good question. Miguel Cabrera ah, takes pointer, a strike. But I, I really usually just call it the pointer, pointer finger. finger. But it's the index. Why do they call it the index? Is there a list on it of all the other fingers? Maybe. We've got something there. It's a point. Call it what it is. It's your pointer finger. It's what you point with. Over there, here, there. Is there a list of other fingers on the index finger? <laughs> yeah, so it's an index. Cabrera to left field. Presley drifting back. He's on the track and they make the catch. Miguel Cabrera is gone. He's one for three now. Well, you got that feeling right now. It's just a. It, it, any adding on by the Tigers might put this game away. Two runs is going to be enough. It's a huge mountain to climb with Verlander out there. Yeah, if you're keeping an eye on other games, Minnesota had a two to one lead in the bottom of the eighth inning, but then Joey Votto hit a two run shot, his fourth of the year, and the Reds have overtaken the Twins late. It's three to two. Meantime, St. Louis ahead of Kansas City, five to two in the second. Wilder is 0 for two. Great play by McGee last time up. With the base is empty, the Pirates will be in a shift with Alvarez out in short right field. Take a look at uh, the balls a bit put in play. And the direction they are, you can see on the ground, dead pole hitter, 48 and 41, center and right. If he puts the ball in the air, in the air he'll spray it, you know, spray it around a little bit. Most of them actually go the opposite direction, and that's a, a trend you'll see with almost every hitter that goes up there. Their pull side is almost always on the ground, and straight away or a, a little bit the other direction when they put the ball in the air. That is not uncommon at all to have those kind of numbers. 
3 0 is on the outside corner. Three balls, one strike to Prince Fielder. But you can see that the ground balls to the left side compared to what he hits through the middle or to the right are almost non existent. Makes all the sense in the world to put a shift on the infield. Ground ball to the pull side. There's Harrison. They'll throw him out. Two down for the Tigers in the sixth. I want to take a moment and wish a happy 66th birthday to John DeBruzzo from Brookline. Watches and listens to all the games religiously. So happy 66th, John, and thanks for being a Bucko fan for as long as you have been. Happy birthday. 66, I think. Nice one. There's a route named after that out west, but you'd, you'd know that if you looked at your atlas. Yep. Not much going on in that route anymore, though. They've kind of bypassed it. They had a good song after. It's mainly Interstate 40 now. <laughs> Here's the old one. Doesn't this really fall off. rhyme, but they think very well. No. You're going to do a song about Interstate 40 or Route 66? Exactly. Man. Good point. Get your kicks on Interstate 40? <laughs> Doesn't sound right. Oh, two pitch to Delman Young. Base hit to right. You were talking up just before that about the spray chart, about how it differs when you look at grounds put in the air, balls put in the air as opposed to balls hit on the ground. There's a ball going in the air the other direction. Well, when that's really important, you know, think about when there's a runner at third base and one out. And that hitter's trying to lift the ball into the air. That's why you'll always hear me talk about try and hit the ball the other direction. You're much more likely to get that fly ball. And, and that's why those strategies, and the hitters know this, that's why the strategy comes into play about what they're trying to do when they want that sack fly. Get that drawn in inter, infield, you want to get the ball over their head, you got to think other direction. You've got to put the ball up in the air, you've got to hit the ball the other way. 0 for 8 in the series for Avilo for 2 today. One ball, one strike. One and one to Avila. Grounded to third, grounded to second. Correa would like to get another playable ground ball here and get Avila out and get the Pirates to the bat rack in the sixth. Pirates needing to find a way to break through against Justin Verlander. Only two hits so far. One of them a bunt base hit by Alex Presley to lead off the bottom of the first inning. And Michael McHenry, an infield hit on a chopper to third. No hits out of the infield. Verlander. Retired the side in order three times out of the five innings. The Pirates have come to the plate. Vila wants time. Home cooking's been great for the Bucks. 23 and 12 here. They've won eight of the last nine home games. Six of the last seven games overall. One and two strikes. Start the day a season best six games over 500 38 and 32. Great crowd on hand. What the crowds this series Bob. Fantastic. Yeah. It'll be like this all summer. Keep playing good baseball. Beautiful ballpark. Beautiful weather. Beautiful city. Great place to be. Pirates going on the road to Philadelphia for four. St. Louis for three. Bouncer two. Harrison he throws out Avila. No runs, a hit, and a man left. We go to the bottom of the sixth.
run at least. That series even at a game apiece. Cincinnati one game up on the Pirates. St. Louis two games back of the Pirates, but they are winning in Kansas City right now, five to two. Top of the third. Busy waterway today outside the ballpark. Two nothing Tigers. And the pinch hitter is Matt Hay. Batting for Correa. Correa had his afternoon finished. Charged with the two earned runs. Scattered six hits around. Pitched extremely well after uh, to give up a couple of runs in the maybe the first the three or four pitches he threw. And then after that, nothing but zeros. Equal to season high with four strikeouts, isn't he? Struck out more than four in any game this year. He's definitely not a strikeout guy. Likes to get his ground balls. Jackson in right center field makes the catch one out. Let's check in with Dan Potash. All right, Tim, thank you very much. Well, Bob Walk, you said that you didn't think Justin Verlander's fastball was reaching its highest velocity. Well, here's why. Maybe he didn't have his fastball flakes earlier today. <laughs> yes, that's right. The pitcher has his own cereal. It actually debuted in February. He's already sold over 100,000 boxes. Here's the catch. 100% of the proceeds, all of it, going to VA hospitals in Detroit and Ann Arbor. Um, here's another thing, guys. <clears throat> I think it's made in Pittsburgh. Nice. I'll buy a box in a second. You know what? I'll bring it on the bus for the ride out to the airport. It's all yours. Snacks. All right. More snacks. No milk, though. No milk. There's milk on the plane. <laughs> you would know that. <laughs> Fastball flakes. Kind of like a certain goalie has his own flakes. The flurry flakes. Two balls and no strikes. A lot of athletes have done that in certain markets. I remember. Is it always flakes? Yeah. Well, quarterback Doug Flutie, I think, was the first one that I remember. He had Flutie flakes. Well, why are they always flakes? Uh, there's a lot of different kinds of cereal you could pick. Well, I guess. Uh, what would you have? Must be a reason why it's flakes always flakes. Or what else? Crispies? Oh, some kind of oat type thing, you know, like a Cheerio type thing. Oh, yeah. How about. Uh, Verlander special case, you know, something like that. Baseball's thinking man, Bob Walk. Base on balls to Presley, and the Pirates with a base runner. This brings the tying run to the plate, Josh Harrison. Start thinking about that tying run now. This was the scenario in the first inning when Presley reached on a bunt base hit. It was already 2 nothing at that point, but really too early to start thinking, ah, oh, the tying runs up. Harrison is 0 for 2. And Harrison, a looper to the left field, out is Peralta. He tracks it down. Too high. Got a Verlander on the on the mound. I wonder if everybody is, anybody's ever said in the first inning. Uh, Against him, it's a possible winning run coming to the plate. <laughs> so, it might be how you have to beat him. One nothing. Our Coors Light Cold Hard Blast comes off the bat of Andrew McCutcheon. Yesterday, in the fourth inning, a three run shot scoring Presley and Tabata. Pirates would win the ball game 4 to 1. 13th home run of the season for Kutch. Talked to him in the clubhouse today about that fastball that he got off the. Of. Max Scherzer said he was thinking that fastball. He said it was 9 6. He knows the speed. 96 mile an hour fastball. He drove it out to one of the deepest parts of the yard. Two outs, one on. And McCutcheon fouls it back. He's behind Verland. They're 0 2. 95 that time. Threw a fastball flake up there. Activity in the bullpen. Chris Reesop. He's been up in each of the last couple of games. And has not entered, but he will be entering here today. Verlander's 0-2 to McCutcheon. And there's a foul ball. A workhorse this guy. Is <laughs> looking at his pitch counts? 
His low is 102. He is never under 100 pitches. Every single time he goes out. Absolute workhorse. Leads the American League in strikeouts now with 109. His high came just third start of the season. He threw 131. That was uh, in Kansas City. And he threw 127 just three games ago in Cincinnati. Touch fought off the off speed pitch. Made a good adjustment. That pitch was number 70. Long ways away from hitting the uh, E sign in the gas tank. Uh, Dela blocks it. Keeps Presley at first base. Of course, the gas tank you're referring to is on our Root Sports Game Connect. Exactly. Go to RootSports.com and hit the Game Connect tab, and we will see what Bob is talking about with the gas tank and how it charts the day's pitcher. You can look at game matchups. Social media, there's a social buzz button, and you can also ask your questions directly to the booth. It's all at rootsports.com, rootsports game connect. One two pick. Got it. Well, McCutcheon strikes out and catches 0 for 3. 58 straight starts with six innings for Justin Verlander. Saturday, July 7th, after the Bucks host the San Francisco Giants at 4.05. See the Rockers perform all their hits like home. And it's not over. It's also an Eaton Park scratch and win Saturday where all fans receive a scratch card. Good for prizes from Eaton Park. Tickets going fast. Get yours at Pirates.com today. July 7th, Dodger. Well, what a day to be hanging out in the water, huh? Pirate Armada out there in the river. <laughs> the Armada, that's right. The Armada, okay. oh, we got some uh, geese out there too. Nice flock around the other boat. The rotunda One of the other boats. Packed. Anytime you see the rotunda like that, you know it is a big so, uh, crowd. Yeah. I'm guessing uh, 38 plus. Chris Resop takes over for Kevin Correa here in the top half of the seventh. Will face the shortstop Johnny Peralta. 7 8 9 to him. Peralta, Rayburn, and Verlander. And a foul tip into the mitt of McHenry for strike one. And 
Pitch foul back. Nothing in two to Johnny Peralta. The bullpen uh, only has their work cut out for them today. As they usually do, and they're almost always up to the challenge, but they can't, uh, no room to bend at all. They're going to throw up zeros. Justin Verlander's got his hitting gloves on. They haven't made that much of a difference for him hitting. But uh, pitching wise, everything seems to be working. Ground ball to short. Barmas will take care of Johnny Peralta. And let's go to our Root Sports Studios for this game break and Rob King. Well, how about that news? The Twins getting to a role as Chapman. Pirates did that when they were in Cincinnati. And now, as Rob reported, a 4 3 Twins lead. And if the Twins can hang on and the Pirates can somehow come back in this game, they would pull into a first place tie with the Reds again in the Central Division. Pirates running out of outs today, however. Got nine outs left to work with. And Rayburn fouls that one back for a strike. St. Louis trying to catch us from behind, and uh, Kansas City hadn't been putting yeah. up much of a fight. They've uh, beat them up pretty good a couple days in a row, and they're trailing five to two in the fourth right now. Sure is a lot of fun to watch the scoreboard. Last couple of years we've been able to do that. Wow. Hello. That was a bullet. How do you do? And there are two down. <laughs> the ball had to have a lot of hook on it also. Barmas going to his left and having to reach back to his right for the catch. Quinn has always been known as a very, very solid defensive shortstop. Had a little gaff earlier today where he lost the grip of the baseball, no error charge. But uh, the way that he plays short takes a bunch of hits away near the middle. Goes very well to his right, which is toward the hole. One and one to Verlander. It's almost like you can't turn the TV on without seeing this guy in some commercial or something. Times are good for Justin Verlander. Dan Potash showed us earlier. He's got his own cereal. That was Mike Cornflakes. I don't want him selling. And this one to right field. Jones going back, and Jones will make the catch. Almost surprised Garrett Jones. But Chris Reesop comes into the seventh and retires the Tigers in order. Seventh inning stretch here at PNC Park. 2 nothing. Detroit will keep you here on this sold out Sunday for Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you now to stand and join the Pirates and Major League Baseball as we remember the lives lost on September 11, 2001, while offering support to our troops here and abroad. Here to lead us with God Bless America are students from Upper St. Clair High School.
as it's time for the seventh inning stretch. Great shots from the AGH cam this afternoon with Dan Potash and Bob Walk. I'm Tim Never. Duchess wants some runs. Bucko fans all want some runs. Trailing the Tigers and Justin Verlander 2 0. Only two hits, both infield singles. One a bunt by Alex Presley, another a chopper down to third by McHenry. And McGee hits this one well to right field, and Barry almost got turned around. Recovered and made the catch. One pitch. And one out of the Pirates half of the seventh. The ball really carried well. Now, earlier we were talking about the spin uh, uh, the pitcher puts on the ball. Well, the, the bat puts a spin on it also. And I think that one had a little backspin working for it. Those line drives that have that little extra get up that comes from the backspin that the bat puts on the ball as a you make contact. That'll always give it a little extra as it's going on the, its flight to the ball. Ball one to Pedro. Alvarez struck out swinging in the second inning and then flied to left in the fourth. Every now and then you'll see a line drive that they'll call play-by-play -play guys like you tend to call humpback liners. Humpback liner. Right? Yeah, and that's a. Uh, Usually you get a little bit of an uppercut swing and right at contact you actually put that almost curveball like spin on the ball. So just as it gets over the infield it dies for the ground. You don't get any carry at all. Alvarez a base hit the center field. And the Bucks will bring the tying run to the plate here in the bottom of the seven. Justin Verlander seems to Ratchet it up as the game goes along. Clint Hurdle talked about just that subject prior to the game. His ability to to, to ratchet it up as the game goes on. Uh, to add velocity. You know, most, most pitchers try and maintain. Every once in a while you'll see a guy, you know, still go get something in the seventh, eighth. You know, but from the, the sixth, seventh inning on, it just kept jumping, uh, the velocity. And the ability to read swings, follow a game plan, scouting report. There's a couple sequences that happened that you knew. That he had the scouting report. Somebody had it, either catcher or him in his back pocket. I mean, they, they had it etched in stone. He's been good. He will be good for a long time. That's what makes you great. Verlander, right now with one out and a runner at first base, facing Garrett Jones. A 1 0 pitch coming. Take a look at his pitch speed by inning. Uh, See how he's done as far as rationing it up, and we really we haven't seen that today. 
He's been consistent. Uh, that first pitch fastball here uh, that he started Garrett out with when it was outside was only 91 mile an hour. So perhaps. Oh, Jones hits one well to right center field. Gone. Tie ball game. Garrett Jones a two run shot. I was about to say perhaps that's a good sign for the later innings today that he's not able to add to the velocity. That 88 mile an hour, yeah, maybe a two seamer, but whatever it was, it doesn't matter. Jones jumps on it, and Garrett ties it up with one swing. Ninth home run of the year for Garrett Jones. And just the seventh home run allowed by Justin Verlander this season. And a new ball game at PNC Park. And that long ball has re energized the sold out crowd this afternoon. There's the chance of let's go butts are echoing all around the place. He'll one to Barmas. And he drops him into left field for a base hit, and the Pirates with the go ahead run on base in the seventh. He knew it. Yep. I think that had to be a two seamer. It was just 88. Looked like he was trying to hit the outside corner with it. Going for a double play ball is what he was looking for. Three straight hits off of Verlander now. Jones, the long ball, has tied the game at two. McHenry he will take a strike. Let's take a look at it again. Oh, look at that, though. The spin, a little on the, the side. A little side spin now. I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be a sinker. Jones, you see his face too after the contact. You can see a little twinkle in the eye. He knew he had it. I'm sure he felt that that smoothness you get in your hands when you hit it right in the sweet spot. That was a uh, from the truck that that was actually a changeup threat. Watch the grip. Yep, there it is. You see the OK off to the side. And that uh, didn't leak. <laughs> That's the kind of arm he has. He throws a changeup 88 mile an hour. McHenry fouls it off. A lot of guys wish they had a fastball at 88. Yeah. It's tough to take uh, your, your pointer finger off the baseball, get it off to the side, and still get enough push. Out of just using your middle finger and your ring finger to get 88 mile an hour worth of velocity on the baseball. That's pretty impressive. O2 down to third. Cabrera goes to second for one. Raider makes the turn. That's a double play. And the inning is over. But Garrett Jones and Pedro Alvarez, Mike Barmas all with hits. Jones able to score Alvarez with this. Two run laser beam into the seats in right center field. Brand new ball game at PNC heading to the eighth inning. All square at two.
by Levin Furniture for a great deal on outdoor furniture. Let's go box. This day in Pirates history brought to you by our friends at Day Automotive. We're going to make your day June 24th, 1933. Arky Vaughn hit for the cycle, collecting five hits and five runs batted in. Eight of the nine Pirates starters recorded at least one RBI and a 15-3 win over the Dodgers. Garrett Jones with a two run homer his ninth home run of the year Jones now with RBI's 26 and 27 of the season. Erlander at the end of that half inning. Taking it out of his hat wasn't pretty well, wasn't too pleased. No question he's a competitor. You know one of the things that's probably bothered him a little bit there is he, he got beat with a change up which I'm sure he's is probably down the totem pole a little bit as uh, he lists his pitches. Austin Jackson first ball swing one pitch and one out for Chris Reese up in the top of the eighth. And normally he has that great great fastball if he wants to get beaten the ball game late. He would probably rather be that because he can throw some heat. Crank up the heat. Well, that's that sums it up for Verlander most of the time because he cranks it up as the game goes along but. We, we saw the graphic at the bottom. He really hasn't been able to do that today. Clinton Berry shows bunt, takes ball one. Now, you know, the question is, does uh, he have that fastball today? And he's just not using it, trying to save it for later in the ball game, or does he just not have the velocity, so he has changed his style a little bit? And uh, you know, mainly you know, tried to do some some more work with off-speed pitches. Change up being one of them. Well, it has gone final in Cincinnati. The Twins have taken the series, two games to one. Josh Willingham's home run made it a four to three Minnesota victory. Garrett Jones getting the Pirates back in this ball game with a two-run shot. The Pirates win. They would be tied with Cincinnati for first place in the division. Three and zero now to Quinton Berry. And right now the Pirates are a half game back, and for Cincinnati, objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Pirates knocking on the door again. They had shared time in first place. Earlier this month with the Reds. Went to Baltimore lost three straight swept by the birds Had a little setback there losing four straight games and then. Uh, bounced back nicely. And Barry a one out walk. And you just hate putting guys on in front of Cabrera and Fielder. Yeah they're. Uh, they're in scoring position when they're standing at the plate so you don't want to put anybody on in front of them. Jeff Banning, uh, that he's. Calling the shots right now. Ben Hurdle ejected in this game in the bottom of the fourth. And Jeff has action in the pin from both sides. But Juan Cruz, the right hander, and Doug Slayton, the left hander. Michael McHenry finishing up his meeting with Chris Reeshop. Sirage checking on their status out in the bullpen. Cabrera's one for three. He had a third inning single. Flat out deep to left his last time up in the sixth. One on and one out for the Tigers in the top of the eighth inning. Couldn't bury the runner at first base. He has walked twice today. Hit his first major league home run back in the first. Socks. Pitch to Cabrera. It's outside for a ball. One thing too, you got to keep an eye on Quinton Berry. Ten stolen bases. He has not been caught stealing. Though earlier today, when Austin Jackson in the third inning tried to swipe second, McHenry threw him out easily, and it ended a string of 30 straight stolen bases against the Pirates. That's a club record. Two and oh. yeah, here we are again too with it. 
the pitcher, you know, in between a rock and a hard place, you want to be quick home, but you got Cabrera up there, one of the best hitters in the game. You don't want to take anything from your pitches just so you can be quick to the plate. And two different pitches in a row, you've had a, a real quick side uh, slide step on the first one, and then on the last pitch, a regular slow leg kick. So Lee Samp, uh, has tried both ways. There's the slow leg kick. Now that's the way, that's his normal delivery. So if he's going to decide, okay, I'm going to give my best effort at the plate, I'm not going to pay any attention to the guy at first, that's what you're going to see out of him. There's the leg kick now on the very first pitch he threw. There was no leg kick at all. He just slid his foot to the plate and went ball one. Do you make that compromise? Four over in a 2 1 count. Pirates want to keep Barry close to the bag. Two two the score top of the eighth inning one out. In the air down the right field side slicing toward the seats. And into the seats for strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Lishop has only faced Cabrera once before in his career, managed to get him out. Well, obviously, a huge part of the ball game in the eighth inning, part of their lineup. This could be the ball game right here, this inning. For first base. And the 2 2 pitch. There he goes. Swung on a miss. Strike three. Throw down. Not in time. They're not going to get him with that leg kick. They do get the out at the plate. And now a runner in scoring position with two outs and Prince Fielder. A guy, like, up. guy like Barry, you're not going to throw out with that leg kick. But if you want to strike out the hitter, you got to do your best on your pitch to the home. You got a pitch going home. Just too big of a jump. It's not going to happen. And that's why you have to make that uh, concession. You have to, okay, I'm going to be slow home because I got to get Cabrera out. That's my job one. That's the priority. But you're going to give up the, the steal. And they will not pitch to Prince Fielder. He will be intentionally walked with first base open and two outs. Get the right on right matchup up next with the left fielder, Delman Young. And with Fielder, he has been terrific in this ballpark in the past. In fact, Fielder. Since the 2010 season has hit more home runs against the Pirates than any other active player is 15. And his former teammate with the Brewers Ryan Braun has 10. And you'd figure Albert Pujols would be in that mix somewhere. He has eight. So almost twice as many home runs against the Pirates for fielder than Albert Pujols. Who would come in here and terrorize the Bucks. Well, they've chosen to go to to Young, which makes all the sense in the world. Ray Searidge is going to go out and uh, and talk to Recep. And I'll, you know what? I bet you they're going to talk about. Do not throw him down and in. Be very careful down and in. This is all about strategy and how to get Delman Young out. I think Young is very quick to that baseball when it's down and in. If you come inside, make sure you, you elevate it. Try to get the ball on his hands. Other than that, stay away from him. Now that's, you know, you know, almost mandatory in this situation when it, late in the ball game with a go ahead run in scoring position. You, know, you can't take a chance. If it was early in a ball game, you'd say, okay, if I fall behind 2 0, though, I'm just going to try and throw the guy strikes. But right here, that is that's what being a reliever is. It's that, that's the difference. There's no room for error. You have to hit your spots. Or go down trying one of the two. You can't take the easy way out just trying to throw a ball over the plate for a strike. Two on and two out for Detroit. Barry at second fielder big lead at first McGee playing behind him. 
They'll try and stay away from him. Strike one. Uh, didn't quite get the ball out there far enough to get it away, but it was up high enough. He couldn't catch up to it. Get ahead of him with a foul ball. A couple of ground balls to short. And a base hit for Young today. One for three. Big point in the ball game for Chris Reshop. Hit. Good speed from Barry. They're going to send him home. Jones makes the throw. It is cut off. Throw to third. They've got Fielder hung up. Detroit's taking the lead at three to two as Fielder is tagged out for the final out of the eighth. A two out RBI single for Delman Young. It's now three to two, Detroit. Well, this is why you have to play the games. This should not have happened. You throw a fastball up and away. Very seldom you're going to get a ground ball hit through that hole to score a run. But that's exactly what did happen in this case. And, uh, you know, thank goodness that uh, Fielder kind of a, a dumb play here. There, you got a, a super fast runner going home. There's no chance that he is going to be uh, thrown out at the plate. Why, why, why give yourself up? And bring it in to the inning. Thanks. Thank goodness he did, and uh, the damage was minimized. Just one run across. Danny Worth goes in at second base. We saw Ryan Rayburn. He moved from second base out to left field. Young is out of the game. And what I mean there, I want to just uh, explain. You give yourself up at times to try and draw a throw from going home. You, you want to make sure that 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 run scores. So you're out there in no man's land. Hey, cut the ball off here. Come get me. Don't want the ball going home with Barry running. That was unnecessary. He, was did not need to do, he did not need to do that. No reason to go to third there. There was already two outs. But as I said, uh, getting the inning over was a good thing for the, the Pirates. It just giving up the one run. Top of the pinch hitting, no one. And he will take a strike. Nothing in two. Top of the hitting in the nine spot. Presley and Harrison do up to follow. Watch that velocity now, these last two innings. Let's see if it jumps up. Then we know if he can bring it up or if he just doesn't have it today. 94 is not bad, but it's not 96, 97, 98. That's where it was the other day when he was up going for the no hitter. 1 2. Oh, count even two balls and two strikes. Uh, the other day, I was when, when he threw that no hitter. Near no hitter, it was like he was bringing in his own closer. You know, it was the, the, the real hard thrower yeah, that comes in exactly. at the end of the game. He acted like he was his own closer. That's a good way to look at that because he was a different guy late yeah, in the game. Yeah. It was as though he had five days rest. 
And a fresh arm. There you see the uh, percentages today. He has thrown uh, mainly a four seam fastball. And Talbot is out on strikes. Well, fans, on Sunday, July 8th, the Pirates will battle the San Francisco Giants at 135. The kids 14 and younger receive a pierogi inner tube, courtesy of Mrs. T's pierogies. Come early for the number one Cochran family fun zone on Federal Street. Stay after. Kids get to run the bases thanks to H.K. Anderson Pretzels. For tickets, visit pirates.com. you got to have the inner tube for the pool this summer. One out, Alex Presley, the hitter. He's one for two with a walk. Tries to bunt his way on again. Had a bunt base hit in the first inning. We were talking about the velocities, how he adds. Well, that hasn't been the case today. He has not been able to add velocity. He's been essentially the same throughout the game. Those are just his fastballs. Strike two. Verlander catching Presley watching that one. Three two Tigers bottom of the eighth inning. Pirates tied it at two on a two run home run in the seventh by Garrett Jones. The Tigers went up on a two out RBI single. By Delman Young and the walk to Quinton Berry. The number two hitter. Looming ever so large here this afternoon. He was the guy that came around and scored the go ahead run. That swing foul ball. And we talked about it when Barry was walked. Walked right in front of Cabrera and Fielder. And they were able to strike out Cabrera as Barry was trying to steal second base. They couldn't get the strike him out, throw him out double play. That would have been a nice thing. But Barry with his 11th stolen base. Quentin Barry's been a factor. He hit the home run in the first inning to make it 2 0. He has scored twice today. I don't know what the final score is going to be, but the one thing this team has uh, shown uh, is that. Uh, there's no quit in them and they will fight right to the very end and they have won their share of one run ball games. This was far from over. There's a 97. Where'd that come from? Uh, he's been holding out on us. <laughs> he's been hiding something. I think he's got more gas than that too. But uh, when uh, Clint Hurdle talked uh, in spring training about finish. I think this team really took that to heart. And whether it's a, a game, a series, or even this season, they will be trying to finish. Well, pitch 97 was at 97 miles an hour, and so was pitch number 98. Jim Leland's seen this before. Verlander's called the closer in. 3-2 and Presley bounces it to the right side. Worth throws it to Fielder and retires Presley. Well, if you go on rootsports.com and click on the Game Connect tab, you can find out how to ask the broadcast. Sean Harker wants to know how is it that Justin Verlander throws harder near the end of the game rather than at the beginning or the middle? Well, you'd have to ask uh, Verlander for the, the real answer. He's the only guy that knows, but just from personal experience and and from just you know, thinking about how could he do this he has to be patient himself he's not trying to throw the ball in those first six innings as hard as he tries later on it uh, there's just no way that he just like gets loose or anything like that that's not the case uh, he's he's trying to save something for the end and that's what he does he does not want to put uh, a lot of pressure on uh, on his arm maybe his elbow. He's backed off a little bit. 
He's throwing the ball, say, 95% early on, and then when he gets later in the game, if he's still around and in the game, now he starts trying to throw some fastballs as fast as he can, as hard as he can. He might lose a little control. That might be another reason. He, early in the game, he's more worried about control. So he's backed off the throttle a little bit. Harrison hits one in the air to left field. Going back is oh, Rayburn at the wall. He takes one away. Josh Harrison gave it a ride, and Rayburn caught up with it at the finish line. And Verlander loves it. Pirates don't. Harrison giving the Tigers a scare, and Rayburn with a big catch. Philadelphia against the Phillies and the weekend back to Central Division play at St. Louis trailing the Pirates in the Central Division are the Cardinals and then back home for a four gamer against the Houston Astros as we climb a little closer to the All-Star break and celebrate the 4th of July. That's our Nissan road ahead and every series there is, is dangerous in its own way. Phillies, a team that's really underachieved this year. That you don't want to break out against you. St. Louis, they're right behind you. you. You want to beat them, and of course the Astros. They're a team that you should be beating. Be interesting. Right, tomorrow night, Eric Bedard, the scheduled starter for the Pirates against Joe Blanton, but that could change. Jeff Carstens is supposed to make a start during the Philadelphia series and could make it. Just you know, if you're speculating. Could make it as soon as tomorrow, and then the rest of the staff gets pushed back. It's an extra day's rest as the Pirates are in the middle of a, or not in the middle, but at the beginning of a long stretch of games 20 games in 20 days. So we'll see. There's been no announcement as far as that goes, but uh, as we always say, that's why they call them probables and not definites. Alex Avila starts the top of the ninth inning by taking a ball from Juan Cruz. Vila has had a rough series. He is 0 for 9. 235 average, five home runs, and he's knocked in 20 runs. Minnesota beating Cincinnati earlier today, 4 to 3. They take that series two games to one. And the Pirates, as we speak, are a half game out of first place. If they can come from behind and win, they would tie the Reds for first. If they would lose, they would remain a game back. Heading into that four game series with Philadelphia starting tomorrow night. Meantime, St. Louis has picked up a run in the sixth inning in Kansas City to break a 5 5 tie. They now lead 6 to 5. One ball and one strike to Alex Avila. Two and one. Two balls and one strike to Avila. Juan Cruz trying to keep the score exactly where it is. And 
get the Pirates to the bat rack in the bottom of the ninth inning when Andrew McCutcheon will lead off. Casey McGee would follow and then Pedro Alvarez is the scheduled third hitter in the inning. Things fell right for Justin Verlander in terms of the batting order but I think Jim Leland would have sent him out there anyway because he has been terrific here this afternoon. Things being equal, the Pirates much better this time around against Verlander, who took a no hitter into the ninth with nine and a third, or eight and a third, rather, on the 18th of May. Before Josh Harrison broke it up. A statement of how good Verlander is. Yeah. Five hits, and we've done much better. I know it. <laughs> it's all relative. Yeah. Quite the pitcher. Cruz delivering two balls, two strikes to Avila. He'll wait now. Tigers have had some great ones over the years. Had his name to theirs. It was like Mickey Lolich. The last guy to win 30 games in a, in a season. Denny McLean is a Detroit Tiger. Can you imagine uh, that ever happening again? 30 game winner? Mm, the, no, would, that'd be hard. Yeah, with today's a, day and age. With the five man rotation, you just don't get enough starts. Vila follows it off. Well, he's 14th in the Tigers' all time list and wins. He's tied with Virgil Trucks, 114 wins in his career. And with three more, he tied Denny McLean for 13th on the club's all time list. McLean finished his Tiger career with 117 wins. He burned out a little bit early. Then he had some other things going on. 3 2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Well, Josh Harrison, remember, he broke up the no hitter back on the 18th of May and almost spoiled a Tiger lead here with two outs. That ball made a, might have been in the first row. Someone tried to make sure it was in there. Verlander and Harrison, a little exchange. That might have been uh, Ross Morgan trying to help us out a little bit. Out I there. think it was the, the prince of left field. Head of the left field loonies trying to rip that ball out of Rayburn's glove. But Verlander saying, all right, you got me last month. I got you this month. I think, uh, you know, James Harrison, as much as anybody else, might kind of, uh, kind of uh, epitomize the attitude of this team. Always go hard, never give up. Finish. Finish. Johnny Peralta with one out has a strike on him. 0 4 3 today. A one pitch from Cruz. It's nothing in two. Foul tip caught by McHenry. One run game for the Pirates. They've been in a lot of these. Oh, two. Oh, tapper to the left side. Charging is Alvarez. Pedro scoops, throws. He got him. Two men out on the Tigers' ninth. Good oh. play by Alvarez. He's been playing some solid defense uh, this year. The great arm. Really, the uh, three infill spots have really kind of solidified uh, with the same guys out there almost every day. We've got uh, you know, Josh kind of moving around a little bit. Josh Harrison will go at second uh, as he is today, occasionally over at shortstop. They've been doing some pretty good work at shortstop. I think that's really been a a nice addition to to his toolbox. Josh went down to, and did a little uh, shortstop work after the season last year, so he could add that. So he's been mixing in at short. Obviously, can still do the job at third. 
But you've had Walker, Barmas, and uh, Alvarez out there pretty much every game. Kind of been set on that side. Two balls and a strike to Ryan Rayburn, and there's your on deck hitter, Justin Verlander. He was due up fourth in the inning, went right to the bench and put his batting gloves on, figuring he'd get up. And that infield's been so uh, so sad at times. We've seen Josh Harrison actually have to go out and play the outfield, which another thing he's going to add it to us. Well, he's had some good, good starts in right field, played left field as well. Three one and Raver might have chased one. Count is full, three and two. Well, full count with two outs, bases empty, and Juan Cruz trying to get out of this inning. See that last pitch. Oh, really has some good fat slider type action to it. There was no might about the chase there. <laughs> he definitely chased one. Payoff pitch. Got him. Strike three. Two strikeouts in a one, two, three inning for Juan Cruz. Last wraps for the Pirates. McCutcheon, McGee, Alvarez do up in the bottom of the ninth, trailing three two. Pirates of the Caribbean that we show on the big screen here between innings. And they want to raise that thing. And this thing is over. Pirates need two. Bloop and a blast time. Justin Verlander comes out looking for his fourth complete game this season. Pirates down a run. Right now, Chris Reesop on the hook after giving up the single run in the eighth inning with two men out. Andrew McCutcheon will lead off against Verlander. Casey McGee and Pedro Alvarez. Now the crowd is certainly into it now. Give him a finish. Three forty one average for McCutcheon. 0 for three today. Chance of MVP starting to trickle around here for the second day in a row. You can vote for your favorite pi favorite Pirates player, perhaps this one, Andrew McCutcheon. Go to pirates.com slash vote. You can vote up to 25 times per computer. Yep. 2 and 0 to McCutcheon. And keep voting for Cutch. See if we can get him a starting nod in the All-Star game. 
13 home runs for McCutcheon, 45 runs batted in, had a three run homer yesterday. Two and one. Well, there's a guy right now in the National League you want leading off an inning in a situation where you need a hit. It's McCutcheon. Verlander's 2 1 delivery. In the air to right field. Barry back to the track. Not enough. One out. He well, had that good sound coming off the bat. Had a nice trajectory for a right field home run. Nice and high. Didn't quite get enough of it. Or somebody sitting there read it well right off the bat. Some say, ah, no, it's too high. Got under it. Casey McGee is 0 for 3. Put the ball hard a couple of times. Struck out once. And pitch. And McGee. Oh, he's right after Tied up, yeah. Back. 98. Where'd that come from? He's got it there. You know, I, I wanted to add one final thing talking about adding velocity. I didn't get a chance to go when we were answering that question earlier. There you see that fastball again at 98. The best way I found to try and add velocity is when you really want to put a little something extra on it, is don't try and throw the ball harder. Because you'll, you'll sometimes you'll actually tighten up your, tight, your arm will tighten up. Uh, you can almost feel yourself squeezing the ball as you take it out of the glove because you're, you're trying to put so much into it. You want to keep everything nice and loose, so don't try and throw the ball harder. Try to add extra velocity to the to the spin. Make it spin faster, and that way your effort comes in right at release, right when you're pulling down through the baseball, and that's where it's really going to pay off. Just think in your mind, you know, if you're a young pitcher, just add spin. Don't try to add. You know, velocity. Just add. If you're adding velocity, add the velocity to how fast the ball is spinning. Two and two now to McGee. The average speed of Verlander's fastball in the first inning, 91.7 miles an hour. He's touched 98 here in the ninth. Pedro is on deck. One out and the 2 2 pitch. He fouls it back. Another 98. Yeah, he's called the closer in here in the ninth. The closer is in the house. Verlander makes his own call to the bullpen and, and just brings in his uh, hard throwing twin brother. Yeah. That's a stunt double. <laughs> Evil twin. Three and two. Incidentally, the numbers on one run games for the Pirates this year. They are 17 and the 11 in one run games. The 11 and five at home. McGee wants to get on for Alvarez. The payoff pitch coming from Justin Verlander. Strike three right down the middle. Casey couldn't pull the trigger. And the Pirates down to their final out. Casey walking back and kind of yelling to himself a little bit. He just got locked up. He froze. There's a release. Four seam fastball. Pretty much down the middle of the plate. Had some giddy up on it, that's for sure. But Casey saw it differently for a split second, and that cost him the swing. Pirates down to their final out now, and Pedro Alvarez, who is one for three today with a run scored. And you literally have to, the blink of an eye to decide whether you're going to swing or not. To start that bat forward from where it is in hitting position to get the head of the bat out in front of home plate. I mean, that takes some time, a couple yeah. tenths of a second anyway. So now you have to decide to swing way earlier than that. Guy throwing 98, that is not much time to make that decision. Right on the outside edge, strike called on the black of the plate. And that's not one that you're going to do a lot with, even if you swing at it. Better to take uh, early in the count and try to 
Hit that ball on the outside black. 1-1. One, one. Alvarez takes strike two. He's looking for a fastball. Didn't get it. His average against fastballs this year, 278 by far. Watch the break. That starts up and away, comes in. Uh, he's looking fastball. He thought that pitch was going to be up and away. He decides not to swing. Here comes the break down into the strike zone. One, two. Alvarez strikes out, and the game is over. The Tigers take this one by a 3 2 score. They salvage a game, but Justin Verlander, a complete game, his fourth of the season. Pirates fought back, but gave it up in the eighth inning. After Reesop walked Quinton Berry, and he would come around on a two out RBI single by Delman Young after stealing second base, and that was the difference in this one. You know, and that no hit, near no hitter that he threw against us the first time, he went to the whip about the seventh inning in that game. Here, he saved it to the ninth. You could see him step his game up, and he just came in the ninth inning and just, you know, wiping guys out. Just a great fastball. Verlander, you're not going to get many opportunities to beat him. He is just a tremendous pitcher, and you tip your hat to him on a day like this. Verlander now eight and four on the season. Pirates take two of three in this interleague series. Interleague play is over for 2012 as the Pirates will move to take on the Philadelphia Phillies tomorrow night in Philadelphia. Final score: Tigers three and the Pirates two. Let's check in with our guys in section 103. Rob King and Kentico. Tim and Bob, thanks very much. And we saw what Justin Verlander could do about a month ago, Teak, with that one hitter. Today, he was cruising along. It wasn't a one hitter. We didn't see the same velocity, but not a lot of hard hit balls. But the Pirates were able to get to him in the bottom of the seventh inning. It felt like, you know, it was going to be one of these games where maybe Verlander goes the distance. You don't score. They hadn't hit the ball hard. But then Alvarez gets the single. And because of that, that set up a pitch sequence that gave Garrett Jones something to hit. Yeah, and we'll take a look at it. I mean, yo, Pedro Alvarez did a great job of leading the le inning off with a uh, uh, with a base hit to center field, and then Jones ends up hitting a changeup out of the ballpark. Now it's an 88 mile an hour changeup, which, by the way, is as good as my best fastball ever was. But nonetheless, yo, know, he got Jones. If, if Alvarez isn't on first, Jones doesn't get a changeup. Thorlander's trying to get a double play in that situation. He throws the changeup to Jones. He gets it up a little bit. Jones hits it out of the ballpark. My guess is if Alvarez doesn't get that base hit. Jones is getting those fastballs right up here at about 97 that he really has a tough time, uh, you know, getting to. So, uh, you know, yes, he hit the ball very hard, and obviously he got, he's the guy that gets the credit for hitting it out of the ballpark. But also give a little nod to Pedro Alvarez for getting on and getting Jones that changeup that he could hit out. You know, then you move on to the top of the eighth inning. Chris Resop pitches a scoreless seventh. And really, I think the whole 